All right, welcome back. In this video, we are going to be discussing how to create a landing page for your Google ad grant. And so up to this point, we have been building out our advertising campaign. Uh, and now we are going to transfer over to building a landing page so we can be begin tracking conversions. Now, I know up to this point, I have kind of alluded to this and talked about it a little bit, and it might have seemed, con uh, seemed a little bit confusing. But I think as we get going um, and actually doing this in person, you're going to get a really good grasp of what a landing page is, how it works, how to make it. Um, and so let's get started. As we begin to make a landing page, the first thing I want to encourage you to do is go to the website of the nonprofit you are pursuing the grant for and get the most important images. So for instance, this is the church that uh, we have been working to get signed up for the Google ad grant. Um, this is their logo. Uh, and you know, if you right click on this here, we can come down, save image as, and save all of the most important features of your website, at least image wise, to um, a little folder with all of your information in it, because we're gonna be putting those onto the landing page that we're going to create. As we know from the last video uh, with, the, with the kind of the 13 reasons why, um, the last section directly above this, we know there's a number of elements we want on our landing page. And I want you to be thinking in terms of those elements as to what you're pulling out of your website. And so as we go down, um, this information right here is really great. What to expect. So here at uh, New Church, we get together at 1030 in the morning uh, on Sunday. So this is good information. I don't necessarily need to copy this. I can just copy this and put it uh, into the page directly. I don't need to save it, but it's good that I have it here. Um, it's just, uh, Sunday school at 915 for young adults and youth. So it looks like there's some kind of Bible study. That's going to be important information for our landing page. What's the mission of the church? Uh, they want to love people and make disciples and they want to worship God and have excellence in worship. Uh, and so that's going to tell you something about, you know, obviously their worship, which, you know, they are kind of featuring quite a bit. Another really important thing that I found on this page is some testimonials. And this is what people are saying about their church. And so, you know, obviously these testimonials are quite, um, you know, flattering. And those are going to be some things that we want to include on the landing page as well. So go through your website, try to get really familiar with uh, all of the benefits and all of the kind of little areas um, that you want to sell of your nonprofit. And we're going to put it on your landing page. In regards to creating a landing page, for instance, this uh, website is built on a um, you know website builder called Squarespace. Uh, there is Wix, there is WordPress, there is Shopify for you know those nonprofit e-commerce stores out there. Um, and you can go into the back end of your website and build out a, a landing page in there. Um, just for the sake of this video, I'm going to show you how to build out this landing page on um, an online software called Instapage. And um, the sole function of this is to build landing pages. So whether or not you're going to use Instapage or you know use uh, whatever hosting service that you have your website on, the idea of this lesson is to just kind of show you the process of actually building a landing page and you can do it on on most platforms um, some look better than others and there are some tools that you look even better than instapage um, but this is the one we're going to use for simplicity's sake i think this is the one that gives the kind of easiest first steps for uh, people beginning. So if Instapage is something that you want to use and you don't already have an account, you're, uh, you will want to click the sign up here and um, there are pricing models. Uh, and I'm just seeing if this is actually shown on the page. It doesn't look like it is. Um, I believe the lowest pricing plan is 49 a month. I could be wrong. So definitely look into it. Um, now I'm going to click login. Once the account has loaded, we can see that their landing page is already created in here. Um, and we're going to create a new landing page. And so what we're going to do is we're going to create new. And for this instance, we'll go with standard page. Um, the AMP pages are super fast loading pages. Um, and I think this is going to be sufficient for what we're doing. 
And as we look here, there are a number of pre-existing templates. And again, this is one of the reasons why I chose this because it does make this simple, especially when you're just kind of getting your feet wet in this whole landing page situation. Now, uh, I encourage you to look through these and as you do so, do, don't choose the landing page based on colors. And um, just kind of taking note of colors here, what are the colors on your uh, nonprofits web page. Now this seems like black and white are going to be their base colors. And then red is their call to action color. And I'm going to try to, on the landing page, I'm going to try to make this match as closely as possible. So you can see red on the landing page. This looks like the links tries to match that red. Um, and as we come down, it's all black and white with just those red, um, calls to action. My suggestion is that when you're choosing a landing page that you don't do it based on color. And it's important to know the colors of your website, but on all of these kind of pre-designed landing page options here, all the colors can be changed to match. Um, and so what we wanna look at is we want to look at and make sure that we understand, firstly, what our goal is. What is it that we're going to ask our um, website visitors to do and which landing page seems to offer uh, the most effective and smooth efficient means for them to do that quickly uh, because again web you know website users are not going to linger around very long and so as I've looked through these and I have already gone through them this right now seems to be a really good option and I'm gonna click preview and we'll kind of discuss why for as it applies to the goals of new church uh, as this has uh, loaded here you can see uh, we have a, a large title so uh, you know very simplistic design there's not going to be much to confuse people um, you know of course and all of these landing pages will have this but you'll see there's no navigation at the top of the page but the thing that i like most is the call to action um, which will probably be red to match the site but the call to action is above the fold, but it's also a register. So this is not selling an item. This isn't necessarily giving away an ebook. Um, but this is a kind of reserving a spot at an event. Um, and so this is one angle we can take. Another angle that we can try to take is, you know, and, and this kind of requires a little bit of testing. We could do it this way where they click register. And we come down to the bottom, which is kind of a neat feature, and we click register, and it says save your spot. Well, um, I think from the perspective of church leaders and someone coming to church, it would be pretty neat if people are coming online, they're saving their spot in exchange for a little free gift, um, and someone you know, they, they actually have a chair when they show up with their name on it because they were being expected. And I think that's a really nice way to make someone feel welcome in, envi in an environment where a lot of people might otherwise feel uncomfortable. Um, and so this is pretty neat. The other way that we could do this is give some kind of free download. Um, so in this case, we're going to give a free gift when they show up on the date they book. Um, and it may be more effective, and this might be something to try um, later is to give away a free download in exchange for their email. Um, I think this is a little bit more connected with the physical church location. And so we're going to give this a try and test it out and see how it works. But uh, overall, I like the landing page. And so this is what we're going to play with. So we're going to click edit page. And in the name your page section here, we just want to know what it is. Um, and so I'm going to type in new church registration. We'll just say that for now. We're going to continue. So I will just kind of delete this web vision on there and uh, I'm going to come into image. Now, if you don't have your images in here, um, you are welcome to upload it. Here is the image here and you can already see that there may be an issue with it being white. And so we will need to figure that out. So we may need to edit it. I'm, we may need to go color it in something like that, but let's see how this works. <clears throat> and then alt text, we can say new church. Uh, we'll just say logo. So we're going to insert this into the page and we can see that this is okay. So as it comes onto the page, we, and I know it's hard to see because it's white, but it's quite large. 
So we're going to pull the corners down and you can see that this is really kind of a, you can kind of see it there, really kind of a drag and drop sort of um, site, which is nice. I'm going to take this right here to the top. Now, when we change the background, I'm going to pick something that's not quite so white. I'm going to put a little bit of grays in there um, if we if we can, and that should make that pop a little more. So we're going to see that in a few minutes. As I come down here, I want to say upcoming services. And you can say Sunday. Uh, let's say we'll say worship service here. And now typically um, I would like to be specific and exact and say, you know, January, whatever the date, just like they have here, uh, you know, service is at such and such time on this day. However, this landing page will be up longer than, you know, once that day passes, we got to come in here and edit this every single Sunday and that's not really feasible. So we want to be sure we're getting the most accurate information across without you know making an unmanageable workload as well so you don't need to be in here editing these every week um, but we want to get them as close as we can so let's see so 10 30 in the morning on sunday is worship so we're gonna say 10 30 a.m pacific standard time uh, when this is kind of an interesting thing to think about from a marketing perspective we have pacific standard time in there in texas which is on central standard time so um you know that might be something even to kind of work out and say is see if there's a you know a reason why we're using pacific standard time because we're going to have people missing those those three little letters right there and showing up at the wrong time um you know, if this, if this is getting in front of a lot of people. And so again, we always want to cut down on confusion. The second thing we're looking for as we're in here. Okay. So Sunday school is at nine 15. And so we're going to say right here. Is at nine 15. AM and I would like to specify somewhere that that Sunday school is they have adult and youth options because kind of when I hear Sunday school, I think it's for kids. Uh, so that would be good to specify. And then we also want to say that this is a Sunday worship service. So there we go. So we have fixed that now on the button here. I don't want to say register now. Um, I want to edit it and I want to come up here and I want to say um, something along, probably just save my spot. Um, when we're marketing, you know, and we've discussed this multiple times, we want to be as exact to our target audience as possible. The people coming on this page are maybe people who are new to town or, you know, as we saw um, on our Google ads, you know, um, keyword forecast that there's a significant amount of people in January who are doing these searches for church near me. So maybe these people are new to town or maybe it's new year's and they're making a resolution, but whatever it is, they don't want to register at a church. It's very vague and generic. And I don't really know what that means. Instead, a better way to communicate, uh, for these calls to action, right. And we're going to have, um, two on this page, which are essentially the same thing come to Sunday service or come to, you know, 1030 AM service. Um, and, and the idea is I want to, and when we put it in terms of, I want to, we begin to think in the mind of our target audience and what does our target audience want? Our target audience, if they're going to look at a church, they want to come in. They don't want to feel uncomfortable. They want to feel welcomed and they don't want to, you know, show up three minutes late and look around and there are no spots and they're that person just standing there. And so what can we do? I want to save my spot. And that kind of tells me that, okay, if I don't know anyone and I'm a little uncomfortable, I'm at least going to show up and they're going to have a spot for me. And that builds a little comfort. And so let's, let's put that in there or, you know, even better save my seat spot is again, just a little bit more vague. Um, and so we can save this in here. So save in seat. Okay. 
that needs to change. Save my seat. Make it all capped there. Great. Okay, so save my seat. And the next thing, and I'm kind of jumping all over the place as we do this, I just copied that, and we will make the ones at the bottom. We're scrolling all the way to the bottom. We're going to make these match. We're going to save my seat there, and we're going to do the same over here. Now, one of these will reflect the worship service, and one will reflect the uh, morning Bible study um, that we looked at before. And so we're going to change that. But first, let's go up and let's get back up here and look at... Um, title options. So what do we want them to know about this church? Um, and so one of the things we can do for inspiration, obviously, is just go right over to the website. And let's just look here. We're a new church in Katy. So they are literally a new church, uh, but the title of their church is also new church. So that's kind of interesting. Okay. So as we've just kind of reviewed the site, what I think I would like to do for the title, and, and again, we're going for clarity. What I would like to do is I would like to make the offer as clear as uh, we can. And so the offer that we're wanting to get across here is save your seat and get a free gift when you, when you come to new church on Sunday. And so let's see how we can kind of word this as clearly as possible. Okay, so maybe we'll say get a free gift when you join us this Sunday. And then down here, and this will be our little subhead. Um, and so we may actually pull this up just a little bit higher. There we go. Keep it centered. And we are going to add a second headline. Make sure this is centered. And we're adding a second headline so that we can change the size and kind of format it uh, a little bit smaller uh, uh, and just distinguish it from the uh, head up top. And we're going to say, save, save your seat. So we're telling them how to do this. So if you save your seat, and what I would like to do is, I, again, we're going to kind of format this a little bit. We're going to center it right here. There we go. There. Um, and something else I think we're going to do is make this all black. I believe that one at the top is all black. That looks a little bit better. And we might make the text just a little bit smaller to separate it out just a little bit. Let's try that. See, that's, well, make it a little bit bigger. There we go. Get a free gift when you join us this Sunday. Save your seat today. So this is very clear as to what we want them to do. Uh, we had a nifty little icon. We have the two options for them to save their seat. So this is this is kind of coming together. Um, now the back. Remember, we still have this logo up here, and at some point we want to put a background in here to um, kind of make this logo more apparent. And of course, we could just change the color of the logo as well. But um, I think given that this website's quite a bit darker, we're going to want um, to just kind of match this sort of um, darker gray color. So we want to add a picture in there to, to make that mesh a little better. But as we go down, so as we come down here, we might say, meet the pastor. Pastor 
and get to know the people. We'll think about a subhead there. One thing that we will do is we will save this image as, yeah, we'll save that right in there. And now I'm going to choose, uh, you know, his picture as we get going in here. I'm going to go into images, and then I'm going to go into upload and just upload this file. Okay, so you can see I've uploaded the file. Just kind of skipping loading screens here, so we can click on this, click edit, and we can choose uh, change the image, and we're going to insert this image, and we can see that we can. So not quite the right size. So what we can do is we can kind of make it, you know, what we'll do is we are going to delete. We're actually going to delete this image. I want to make sure that it looks right. And we'll just insert the image. When we insert the image into the other one, it picked the size of the image that was already there. And I think it would be better if we had um, the image kind of correctly sized. So we might say, Pastor Frank, And then we can continue and say, Pastor is a musician and author. He has a, he is passionate about the word and spreading the gospel message. Okay. Now, one thing I will do as I kind of um, get to know, you know, and there's some, as we set this up, you're in your nonprofit organization, you're going to know more details than I do about this church. Um, you know, it's not even in my state. So as I contact them, I'll have a list of questions and I'll say, okay, well, hey, what kind of music do you generally play? Because um, it, you know, it's definitely contemporary, but it doesn't look like uh, you know, what you would typically see at a contemporary church. It looks like it's got its own kind of uh, vibe going on. And so what I want to do is maybe even specify that a little more because that's something that's clearly important to their church and their culture. And I want to make sure to represent that. Um, and I'm just going to kind of think about these and we can remove them. We can make them the same. Um, another thing that I want to do is... That looks a little thin. That looks a little unusual there. Let's not do that. Let's undo that. So you can see here, you've got an undo button. I think that looks pretty nice. Uh, so the next thing that you can do in these blocks, if you decide, hey, I don't need them quite so large or small, oop, we can insert block, uh, excuse me, not, we don't want to insert the block. There we go. We can click on the little line here and we can make them larger or smaller if you want to add more or less to the block. So as I'm just scrolling here, I want to kind of find a video to put right here. So we're going to come here and we're going to say play button and the play button. a short worship preview. And we might we might work with that a little bit, but that's pretty good. And now we're going to find the video um, on the website right here. You'll see that they do have a little um, preview. And so what we want to do is we actually want to find where this is. It says it is well with my soul, Frank Hart and new church. So let's find that. Oh, my church is well with my soul, Frank Hart. Okay. It looks like this is it. Make sure it's like four minutes. Yep. Perfect. So we have this link. So we're just going to copy the link. Also, um, 
Pastor Frank here. His last name is Hart. So we are just quickly going to drop that up here. I'm going to say Pastor Frank Hart. I'm just kind of filling it out. And then what we're, so how we do this is, this is an interesting, uh, kind of a cool feature. We're going to click on it and we don't want to change this, but this picture actually has a functionality and you can see that there is a click event. We can change the image, but it looks nice. Um, so there's a click event here. And if we click on that, it says it goes to a pop-up. And if we click on that pop-up, we see that oh, we now have them playing. We see that this comes up and now I can go in and choose what video links in here. So we're gonna edit this and all we have to do is drop in the link to our YouTube video we will include the progress bar and we will also auto play it once it opens. So we can see that this pop-up now has the video we want and we're going to go back and we may shorten this even further and say click play for a church, uh, short worship preview. Perfect. Um, now I don't think that, let's see if we can make this a little smaller, make that a little more center. And then we come down here and we're going to say what people are saying about me. Um, now you can see on the title lines, um, I am capitalizing every words, word. And that's pretty standard when you're doing marketing because it catches attention. Um, and it says this is important. And again, people like to skim. So, you know, obviously with like these quotes, that's not something that we need to do. Um, however, with titles that can be very, uh, that can make a difference on your page. So we're gonna come back up here and we're going to find those testimonials. Okay, so we're just looking for these uh, testimonials of the church so that we can put them in. So we can see we have Donna Schultz here and Donna Schultz is saying um, this right here, and we are going to drop that text right here. And we're going to take this. And actually, one thing that I will want to do uh, is make sure that I have accurate pictures on these. But for now, we will just put these For now, we will just put these uh, quotes in here. And then again, that's gonna be something that I ask staff for, so I can just represent this nicely. Okay, I don't know who Donna Schultz is. Uh, I don't know who Donna Schultz is, so we're gonna take this out for now and just kind of center this next to Donna Schultz. And then we will go over here and we'll get the second one, hopefully Suzanne Foster. Okay, so uh, we're gonna come right here, copy this. Suzanne Foster's right there. And Okay, and we chose not to go with the dash on the other one, so we're gonna back up on that. Okay, and again, we're gonna get rid of that. We're gonna pull this down a little bit to make sure. And then you can see there's a shadow here, and so I wanna make sure that shadow's under the actual page. Um, and we're going to pull this one down as well, just to make it even. Looks like that's pretty even right there. Okay. So those look nice now. What people are saying about new church. And I think we can actually pull this down a little bit. I don't always like to have a subhead under every single thing. Okay, so um, just as far as we're working with this, you can see I've got a lot of white space up here. And again, 
I want to keep this simple and to the point. So we can actually select multiple elements at once and drag them. And so we just want to drag this up a little bit higher here, make sure it's even with the middle. And so we can just maybe right there. Okay. And we can pull this up as I kind of showed you earlier. Okay. And now if you remember here from the top, get a free gift when you join us this Sunday, you can see that we want to make the bottom call to action the same as the call to action on the top of the page. Uh, oh, and this is the top of the page. We got it up here again. Here we go. So we want this call to action to be the same as the one on the top. So we'll do this and let's see. It might go up and I'm going to copy the subhead here as well. I might also say, don't wait, comma, save your seat today. Great. Okay, so again, I'm just adding some urgency in there. We're going to copy it. And we're going to drag it and paste it right in here. Now we'll probably also want to make sure that the font is the same on that. So we've got size 28 and we have bold. So we're just going to match that down here because this is definitely the same. There we go. Bold. There we go. Pull it up a little closer. And then we want to add and I believe we said worship service Sunday worship service. Okay, and then let's just make sure we have it just right. So as we come down here, we're just going to all the Sunday school. Okay, here we go. Upcoming service. Okay, and we're going to Delete all of that. And we are, yeah, that's okay. And we're going to say, say upcoming, oh, Okay, so it's given me a little trouble. And instead of figuring out the text here, what I will do, I'm just gonna click on this duplicate button and you'll see quickly that it instantly just makes a copy of that. So it's much faster for me just to copy and paste this um, text than it is to go into all the settings and change the font and the color to green. So I can actually just delete this and bring this right down into place. And I want this to say upcoming study, a Bible study. Um, so we can see that I need to actually get that date. Okay, so I'm pasting the date in there. There we go. 
And so we have save my seat, save my seat. Um, I do think, oh, that's not what we want to do. Try again. Okay. So what we do want to do is we do want to kind of get this off the button there and just make a little space. Um, we can pull, no, pull it up that far, but we do want to pull it up a little bit. There we go. And so we can kind of see that this is beginning to come together. And now this is not quite as centered as I had hoped. Uh, so we're going to pull it up a little bit. Okay. Okay, so this right here for now, I don't think this is necessary. And again, so we're just deleting the block here on the side. Okay, so meet the pastor. I need something to put in here and something in here as well. And another question that I want to add to ask myself as we continue doing this is, you know, obviously do I need this block, but what information does our target audience not have at this point? They, we don't have an address. One of the ways that I kind of think about this is I say who, what, when, where, why, how, because what we don't want to do is we don't want to leave our target audience with any questions whatsoever. They want to come here and they want all of the answers just kind of, kind of spoon fed to them. Uh, because again, we want to keep it as simple as possible. And so we might, we might just completely turn this into an address, uh, because I think that's really important. And I think we've answered the majority of the other questions. We've kind of said who they're going to be meeting. We said what they're going to experience. Uh, we've also kind of said, you know, what other people are, are seeing. We know when, and we know, uh, the, what we're asking them to do as well. So we've really given quite a bit of information in in a very um, reasonable amount of text here. So I think the last thing we want to do is give them an idea of where it is. So ultimately, I think what we will do with this is we're going to delete these and we will delete this one. And um, we're going to go into images. Now I have already uploaded the icon I'm going to use. If you're looking for icons or you don't know how to get them, icons are work really, really well on landing pages. Uh, they communicate a lot in a, in just a little bit of space. Um, you can go to a website called flat icon and get royalty free, uh, icons. And generally you just have to kind of share, uh, if you could do the free plan, then you just share where you want to put those, or excuse me, you just share the, um, link of the author of those icons in the little footer of your page but we are going to add this little uh, location icon here and then we may try to center it there copy this and we can just make this really simple and just say location and then what we will do so we will go into the church's website again, come down, is that it right there? I think I saw it. There it is. And we're going to put it exactly as it's shown here. And we're going to create a little, uh, you know, text paragraph. We'll probably bring this text um, over and make it black so it matches. Make that roughly the same size as the text. And we will go color. I also want to make sure that the fonts are uniform. So it looks like they are the same. So I don't see a way to change the font. So size 15, size 16. So I might change this and just drop it down one and then just make that bold. So it's easy to see. 
and we might, well, that looks nice. We'll leave it like that. So you can see that this is beginning to come together. It's starting to look really nice and all of the areas are pretty well filled in. Now there are a couple things that I will do as we continue on. I, one thing I suggest as things start to come together is I would suggest um, clicking the preview button and it will actually show you what your page looks like and how it functions uh, kind of outside the editor. So what people are actually going to see when they come to your page. And a lot of times when you see it in this light, it gives you a little bit of a different angle to point out some issues really quickly. All right, so as this page comes up, we can see that it's starting to look very good. Uh, one of the things that we will want to check is to make sure that the functionality of all of the buttons are actually working. Um, and so we wanna just kind of get a glimpse here. It's looking good. I really like the contrast between the sections. It really helps to separate it out for people um, as they're scrolling. I also love how the text is kind of uh, kind of a mirror image of the colors. And when we scroll up to the darker areas, you can see that it's white. I don't know, that looks really nice. So we're gonna to wanna to put something in these. And it looks like the only other thing that needs to be done is to change this image. So I'm gonna go ahead and exit out of this and solve those two problems. And we will um, call it good on this landing page. And then we're gonna move on to the next step, which uh, is substantially faster. The kind of creation of the landing page takes the longest uh, amount of time. This picture here is pretty large, and I think that this will probably fit nicely behind the image that we're working with. So what I will do is um, I'm going to save as, and I'm going to save this into our new church file and go over here. And again, I'm going to upload this image. Uh, and I'll skip through this so that, you know, we don't have to watch going through the whole uploading process. Very simple. And uh, we will then put this as the background and I'll show you how to do that. But for now, I'm just going to upload. Okay, so um, I have gone in uh, the video, the image I initially chosen uh, was not, I could not download that image. And so I went back into the website and I have chosen this one, which I think looks quite nice. Now, one of the things that I'm, I will want to change is the color. And so we will want to kind of put an overlay. You can notice on the background that's here now, um, it's very washed out and you can kind of get a sense of what's going on. I see a computer here. Um, you know, it looks like a little office space, but with your background images, you don't want them to be overpowering. The idea is to have them a little bit washed out and a little bit in the background. So they give the feel and they kind of impact your viewers with emotion, but aren't distracting from the text. What we want them to focus on kind of consciously is this, uh, this text here, and we don't want the picture drawing too much attention. So let's see if we can't make that happen. So we click over here and in the top left corner, you can see um, more. So let's click on the image button and we're gonna click on background image, change image, and we're, we will insert our image. And you'll notice as this comes in, it is already uh, have a nice fade to it. Um, I might actually want to make that just a little bit darker and I might pull a little grayscale in if I can. I'm not a big fan of the pink with the black and white we're trying to stick to. So you can see uh, the overlay, we can change how this whole um, overlay works. And so we can kind of choose how much we want um, the color to be affected. And, you know, I think pretty close to where we're at is good. Um, just just kind of see, and again, you know, we just want to look and we want to make sure. Now I actually like that quite a bit instead of just having it a hard image uh, where we scroll with it. I actually like where it's kind of got that parallax feature on there where we scroll over the image. Um, I think that's really nice. And so um, let's click done and let's just see how that looks. And I've changed the background color 
as well, just to kind of add a little bit more of a gray to it than, than a white. And, you know, I think that looks okay. I don't think this pink is going to be distracting. Um, and also to make it match, see how we're kind of scrolling over it here to make it match. I'm going to come here. And I'm going to see if we can add that same, we can see that the overlay here is much darker. Um, and so we're going to add that same image insert, and, but you can see that the overlay here is darker. And, and so that looks really nice as well. So we're going to click done there and that looks, let's make sure that it scrolls correctly. Yep. So we see there it's scrolling, right. And, um, again with the computer and now we can vary these images if we want. I like to start simple and then do a B tests, which we haven't discussed yet, but I like to do a B tests on the landing page, um, as well to see how that converts. So for instance, we might start with one image in here and then do, um, kind of some split testing to see if it affects how many people sign up. And if it does, then we keep it. And if not, then we go back and we can just kind of continue to do that over and over. And so, um, again, right here, I'm still not seeing the logo very well. So I'm going to come in here and the overlay, I might choose, see now that looks, now we can see the logo. We can see the text. Um, it's a little bit darker in color, um, which kind of helps to merge it with the website a little bit. I don't know that I really want to go all the way black, but um, it's still kind of um, adding to that same feel. I think that looks nice. So another thing that I want to do, and this might actually even um, help match that background, that kind of pink color background, if we come to the home page. here, we want to kind of pull, uh, we might want to pull some of these reds in there instead of the greens. Um, and so again, this is something I may wait on that because this is something sometimes with reds, reds are very attention grabbing, but kind of from a color psychology point of view, reds say stop and they, they almost communicate emergency. And sometimes that color can kind of pull in a negative feel to the page. Whereas green says, everything's good go, um, you know, pleasant growth. And so those are some of the emotional words that are kind of pulling in with green. So, um, what we might do at this point, as we have the page more or less filled out here and it's looking nice, I might create an AB split test. And so one of the things that I might test first, uh, and so you can see new variation, this is going to create exactly the same page. Um, we're just going to say new variation. Oh, okay. So there it is. It loaded. I'm going to click back. There we go. Don't wait, save your seat. Okay. So now we have a variation B and a variation A. And so right now we're edi editing variation B. And so, um, as we come in here, I might try and edit this button and change the button color to more of a deep red to match the website. Uh, and I think, I think that's actually a pretty accurate representation of that red. Um, and then for this other red, uh, we're going to come, where'd it go? We will come here. We don't want to hover green. We want to come here and we want to just change this just a little bit, maybe make it a little bit lighter. I want to make it darker. And, and as I'm doing this, I'm just kind of looking at this to kind of see, um, the comparison. So I think that right there is, that looks, uh, you know, like they match pretty well, but it changes enough. Um, and so what we will do, these are both saved in here. So you can see that these are recent colors. So we're going to back up here. We'll go down to the buttons at the bottom, edit this. 
and we'll quickly change these. And then the other thing, again, if we're changing this color scheme, we don't want it to look like Christmas, I don't think. So I think it would make a lot of sense to change the colors of uh, the text here. And I can speed through this. You don't necessarily have to watch that happen. Um, I might also want to change the background color of the button to the same color um, and, and potentially uh, we might, okay, we don't want to change that image. So this is a, an interesting thing. We might have to edit this image here. Oh, here we go. Let's see what that does. There we go. Let's edit this. And we'll change that to that deep red. I'll drop that back on top. And that looks nice. And so again, we're just kind of making the whole theme match itself. Now, um, I think the red is more accurate to the church's brand. However, I think at the same time for a first impression on a landing page, this, this may be a little much. Um, and so um, we will test them. We will see what converts for the church, and then we will um, choose which one, and then we can do another test. And so we are going to save both of these. Uh, now that this is finished, we're going to go back to our home dashboard once this is saved. And once we're here, uh, you'll see that your new church, your your page preview is created now. So we haven't actually published this yet, but we don't want to do that quite yet. And so what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate this. Um, and now you can do this how you want. If you want to go in and get a completely different page, you're welcome to. Um, again, I generally like to keep things simple. And what I want to do for this is I want to rename it. And I just want to say, this is not the new church registration. This is the new church. Uh, thank you. This is the page that the users are going to reroute to once they sign up. Okay. We're still not renaming here. Okay. So you can see that we have this renamed here and we will go into this page. And once we're here, we want to double check. We see that we're in new church. Thank you page. And now the thank you page is a very simple page um, that doesn't have to contain a lot of information. And so the next thing that we will do here in the thank you page is we're going to delete um, these bottom portions. And I, I suppose you could leave them if you want um, a thank you page. Generally, people leave them completely blank and we won't want to do that. Um, what we will do is we're just going to have this top section. So we're going to essentially remove scrolling and we're just going to have this top section here, but it will just thank them for I was not even going to thank them. We're going to say, we look forward to meeting you on Sunday. Um, and then we might say on this button, we're going to edit. We are not, we're no longer going to go to an on page link because we don't have the on page links anymore. What we will go to is an outside URL and we will actually go ahead and we will go to the home page in this instance of Katie church. Uh, and now typically what I've said in the past is we don't want to send your advertising traffic to the home page. And the reason that we don't want to do that is because we don't have information from them. But once we have their information, we can follow up with them as many times as we want. And once they've filled that out, we're actually going to use this thank you page as a, another little advertisement to get them further into the website. Um, and so now we can release them into the website, um, And so I want to see the website. Um, and so we can remove this and maybe even pull this up a little. Ooh, and you can see the shadow there. We're going to need to make sure we take that with it. And you can see that this is 
much more uh, is much faster than the previous one. You can see the little check mark where scheduled. Um, and then again, I want to add a new headline. This is 41. I think the last one we made was 28, if I remember right. Click the link below to learn more about new church. Great. So this is a, a even just a little second call to action. And it's not necessary. Most people don't do it. But if they're going to see the page, we may as well use it for something beneficial for your uh, nonprofit organization. So some people use these pages for upsells. Um, but you can see it's very clean. It's very clear. We could do a split test with the red and the green again. Uh, however, at this point, uh, I'm just going to leave it with green. I'm pretty confident that the green is going to outperform the red. But if it happens, if we see something other than that on the initial page, then I may go ahead and change this to red to see what happens. Um, just kind of make everything a little more even. Something to keep in mind as you are making your landing pages, and I'm going to go back and do this. I'm not going to do this uh, on the video, but I will go back. You can see that there's a desktop setting and that's what we're editing. There's also a mobile setting and I'm going to save this before I go into that just to be on the safe side. So I've saved it and we'll click on mobile and you can see here that it's a little bit more spread out than we see on the initial landing page. So we're just going to kind of pull this together a little bit. and just kind of make it look right on mobile. Um, and now I will go through and I'll do the actual landing page. Uh, but again, we're not going to go through that whole situation um, here on this video. So we'll go back to desktop. And now all we have to do is we just have to save this for now. And we're, again, we're not gonna publish these quite yet. Um, this is, we're kind of coming to the conclusion of designing these and we will see that we now have a completed thank you page here and a new church registration page. And so what will happen again is as they come from the ads, they will land on our landing page, which is our registration page. And then once they have put their email and their, and their name in there and click submit, they will be rerouted to the thank you page. And so in the next few videos, we're gonna look at setting up conversion tracking and we are gonna put a conversion code on this thank you page. And the only way to get to that thank you page is by putting your name and email in. So when they do that and they come to this page, we know without with a with certainty that someone from our ads has just done what we want and then we can track how many people are doing that and we can also track the effectiveness um, of our advertisement in terms of conversion rates and that's very important that we do that it's also required if we're signing up for the google ad grant as always i just want to thank you so much for just being here uh, with us on this course and walking through the steps to get the Google ad grant. Uh, if you've enjoyed this video and you are on YouTube, just click the link below the video um, and join us here on page uh, where we are going through the Google ad grant, the ultimate guide where we're going through each step one at a time in video and pictures and uh, just kind of simple text to make this as easy as possible. And I look forward to seeing you in the very next video.